good evening and welcome to uh, another episode of the OnTrade Network Sessions. Uh, my guest tonight is uh, is the Area Sales Manager for West Berkshire Brewery, Danny Matheson. Danny, thanks for joining me. Hey yeah, Ross, good to see you mate. Yeah, and uh, thank you very much for, for getting on board and uh, and joining us for today. So I'm gonna we're gonna do a bit of a Q and A with, with with Danny and do some sampling as well of some of the great beers from from West Barks. So uh, yeah, a little bit first about yourself and, and about West Barks, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, all right. Um, so originally from Australia, uh, I've been over here for quite a few years, but my background is uh, I worked in pubs and that in Australia up to management level and then um, and also some retail with Majestic um, and I've worked doing drinks dispense supply chain customer marketing and back to sales again now and I look after the Surrey and Hampshire region so um, and that's pretty much all encompassing so you know off licenses independence um, you know working for with some of the least intended outlets as well. So it's a really good mix. And I think it just, I think you touched on it the, the other week. It's just, it's my nature. I like meeting people, finding out their businesses and how we can support them and help them. And I think that's like a lot of people in this industry. So, um, and it's always great to be able to recommend some great places that you find, whether you're on the road or who you're dealing with. And uh, yeah, I'm quite lucky I'm a bit spoiled for choice at the moment. So yeah. My bank balance is sort of starting to reflect that by going out now. But for West Berkshire Brewery, we've been around since 1995. We were started by a husband and wife, uh, Dave and Helen Maggs, um, basically first brewing on a hob uh, at the back of the um, pot kiln pub in Frilsham. And then basically we've grown consecutively over the last 25 years. So mainly around the, the village of Yaddingdon, so one of the expansions was into the old bakery onto uh, a 25 barrel kit. And then uh, we've then moved to our current site and had two expansions there. So now we're on a 60 heck automated brewing and canning and kegging line. So we're, we've been busy throughout COVID and, um, you know, we brew, we started off on cask, um, but we also now do like craft lagers, pale ales, and that as well. So we've got, and also non-alcoholic beer as well. So we've got a range there, the solo range. So we've tried to make sure that we've got a beer for each sort of category. And um, they're all picking up awards uh, even more so. So joining the other 40 that we had over the last 25 years. So yeah, last year was, I think the only negative was we couldn't have a birthday party, but I think this year we're going to make up for that. So um, really looking forward to that yeah. um, later this year when we can with all our locals and all our cu customers. Brilliant. So we're going to try one of the beers now. Yep. So what I recommend is we uh, do the Renegade. Cool. So um, this was um, first brewed in 2015. So when we decided to not just focus on cask, but going to craft lagers as the market was, you know, people were starting to get more and more involved in not just looking at, you know, the mainstream beers. They wanted to try things that had more hops and a bit more flavor. So this was our first, first brewed craft lager and we did it as a Pilsner style. Um, it's continued to be 100% British ingredients. It's vegan, both in keg and in package. Um, and yeah, mate. Cheers. Cheers. I tell you what, I've been waiting all day for that. Yeah, well, yeah, no, I've had a pretty long day and that definitely <laughs> helps. That, that helps. It's, re it's really so, yeah, I think when you're going through like you normally would on your beer tasting, you're looking at something that's a bit, on looks, it's pale gold. Um, with our glasses, yeah, you still get loads of carbonation and bubbles in it. The head, head retention is still there. Um, I think from the hops that we get, you get really nice, for me, it's a, a nice sort of grassy smell. Mm. And that. So, 
just really easy to drink. And, uh, yeah, and I think with the Europills malt and the hops that we use, it just gives you a nice, crisp, dry taste. So, and it is, it's, this is the beer that I enjoy when I'm having a barbecue during the summer. And um, last year, there was quite a few barbecues. Um, we were doing some um, building work. So uh, with no kitchen, the barbecue got a bit of a, a bashing. Um, but it is, it's just one of those beers, ice cold, really refreshing. And what we try and do with our whole range of beers is just a nice, well-balanced, easy drinking range of beers. And yeah, I think to start this one off, start off today, this is a really good one to start with. Perfect, absolutely. But um, we, you know, like I, I just said, you know, with COVID, you know, and, and I think um, Mitch touched on in the first one, we lost about 85% of our on-trade business. Yeah. Um, and, you know, with every, everyone then started going online. So we already had an online shop and, you know, most of us were furloughed, including some, the brewery staff and, you know, we had a backbone of people, especially the senior management and some other key, key staff that really had to hold the fort through that period um, between, you know, lockdowns being released and stuff. So, um, yeah, it, but then I think the demand and the support that people gave us, you know, I think within two weeks, the brewery team started having to come back to brew more beer for us. And then because of the size of the brewery, um, we also do contract brewing and packing. So yeah. we had a number of breweries coming to us saying, look, can you help us out with the, and that. So that sort of really helped us going. So we had a number of different channels that we could use. So we had our own products being sold through online and through some of the supermarket customers that we work with, and then our independent bottle shops. And then we also um, were doing a lot for other brewer like craft brewers and also some other larger regional brewers and stuff like that. So, yeah, that sort of kept us kept us going. So, yeah. um, you know, that thing with furlough and and that there's always that uncertainty. But you know, the guys that kept going, they've really smashed it out of the park, as far as I'm concerned. And that's not just our business; it's the industry as a whole. So, yeah, you you definitely saw a lot of people step up uh, during the pandemic. I know you guys do a lot of contract canning as well, don't you? So, uh, yeah. so with with the off trade doing so well for a lot of the customers that you that you help can for, that, that's got to have been yeah. a, a lifeline for the business. Um, but, but, but certainly, yeah, you, you you've seen, the, you know, the, the real winners uh, in our industry are the ones that stepped up and and tried to adapt to the to the situation. So, uh, yeah. and, and I think you see that, and you're probably seeing it as well with your customers. Um, just the inventiveness and the innovation that people came up with um, to keep going. Um, I don't think I spoke to between any of the lockdowns, anyone who wanted to be shut. No. They just were like, I really want to be open, but we're at a point where we can't do it or it's we're not suitable. And, you know, I'm hoping that come May and then June, that those guys are supported as well as what everyone is at the moment, because you want to see everyone. I think you said it as well. It's a new normal and you have to be sort of like, yeah, a bit of the old way of working, but you've also got to look at how you're operating now. So. Yeah. And there's definitely been some challenges that won't go away for a long time. Yeah. But, you know, we're in a, probably in a good place with all of the things that are, in place now, like you know, the you know businesses that wouldn't have done table service or contactless payments or you know all that all that kind yeah. of stuff are, are equipped to do it. You know, and a lot of suppliers have stepped in with bucket serves and jug serves and yeah. you know that kind of thing, and uh, that will become the new normal. So uh, yeah, and, and that's even with people that are premium brands as well, because you have to find that way of getting it something into someone's hands and yeah. that's the way it is now because you know you've got to stop with, you know worrying about infection rates and 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 i think that what we'll see is a lot of things in processes that 
operators use and also suppliers, that those little things will stay the cut and that becomes your new normal. Yeah. You know, um, you know and, and I think people who provide those services, you know, like payment schemes, uh, payment apps and stuff like that, if it doesn't work, it's too clunky, someone else steps in yeah. and they do it really quickly. So, um, and I think that's what we're going to be seeing going forward. Yeah, and actually, um, you know, the standards are pretty high in most pubs that I drink in sort of pre-COVID anyway. Yeah. You know, that that risk of cross-contamination and, and everything that you're going to get a little bit of with the, the number of pints that people are handing over the bar, actually, this the, the hygiene uh, standards and the, the, the things that have been put in place can only benefit businesses long term. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a little bit of future proofing and making standards for it. I think it's just, you know, there was an outlay there that people weren't ready for. And, you know, it, it, it does hurt. But that's what I mean. I think people are showing at the moment that they've got the confidence to be going out. You know, you're seeing some customers, they're fully booked for weeks on end, sometimes months on end on certain days. And that's fantastic to see. Um, I know the pub around the corner from us, um, we were lucky to get a booking on a Sunday night. It was a last minute thing for us, but you know, it was great to be sitting in a beer garden, having a meal and just, yeah, sitting there and people having conversations around you and, and that. So yeah, it was really good. So it, it sounds, it sounds silly that, so Wales, uh, I'm, I'm in Cardiff and Wales, yeah. Wales opened yesterday uh, for outdoor space. And I was, I was sat in the pub beer garden having a couple of beers uh, with my wife and children. And I stopped and looked around at people having fun, drinking. And yeah. it was quite emotional. It was, you know, after what we've all been through, uh, and, you know, we're not out of the other side yet, but it was really emotional to watch and see. So uh, it, it's exciting, isn't it? Yeah, I think, I think you're right. I think there's, through the hardship and the future proof and all that, there's some great opportunities going forward. And, you know, I'm hoping that, you know, our industry leaders and that push people forwards to make sure that as an industry that we're not forgotten because, you know, we're a massive employer. There's, you know, great ways of working that people have established in that. And that's, and we've shown them what we can do, um, both suppliers, operators alike. So something to, you know, hold our heads up and go, look, no, this isn't on. This is how we need to be doing it. And, yeah, the, the, all, the, all the different types of venues that we've been into in the last couple of weeks, it's been fantastic, you know. Mm-hmm. It's been nice and easy. It's simple. If there has been an issue, the guys have sorted it straight away, whether it's ordering or whatever. And, and, and like I said, it's, you know, things like pop-up beer gardens and kitchens, you know, it, it, it makes it really good. So, and I think, to be honest, you're out of your house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just like, this is the real world, isn't it? Okay, fantastic. So, and I think that's what everyone's starting to enjoy, so. And those those beer gardens that, that weren't there before, that will probably become a a permanent feature for people, you know, extra outside space. And yeah. So, uh, and, and to be fair, one of the real benefits that I've, that I've noticed certainly in, in Cardiff is the, the relaxation of licensing laws to, to let yeah. people operate out on the pavement, you know, in a safe way. It's not a free for all, but it's things that you, you, you kind of think, well, why weren't they allowed to do that before? Because it just maximizes, yeah. you know, it helps businesses to maximize their space. It gives you that European cafe culture that Definitely. on a sunny day, everybody loves. So, so yeah, the, the, those are the benefits, aren't they, from, from this new normal? Yeah, yeah. And I, like me and my wife were talking even last night, and we're already making plans with each other's friends to like go outside, right, I'm going out with a couple of mates. Um, did you want to try another beer? Yes, definitely. So what I thought is we'll try the... Uh, the solo. Okay. So solo. Um, so th- we have a range of solo non-alcoholic beers. They're uh, 0.5%. 
Okay. And so we do a pale ale, which is our biggest seller out of the three. We do a pilsner and we also do a peach pale ale. So, um, yeah, I love that smell. You get a really, I get a really nice pine sort of smell from, you know, we use citra hops in there as well, yeah. um, as well as some Chinook, Chinook hops. Um, the malt, basically with the non-alcoholic beers, there's a couple of ways you can do it. One, one is that you boil a normal, you brew a normal beer and then you extract the alcohol and probably water it down. And to get to the ABV, you do it. The other way, which we do is like a limited um, fer fermentation method. And it's in this way, it's a nice easy way where you can sort of crunch the chemistry of, of using the malts and the hops. And that by looking at sort of a malt bill and yeast that has a low fermentation level. Mm -hmm. And then that way, what you're doing is you're brewing a normal beer at low fer fermentation to get those sugars out, but you're also managing to keep, you know, the flavour, the aroma and the body yeah. of the beer that you're originally brewing. And that's what the way that we do it. And that way it keeps the ABV down as well. So I've got to say yeah. what, what I like about that, um, a couple of years ago, I did a bit of a, a bit of research for role I was in on on known low beers, yeah. and uh, and what you tend to find with a, a number of them is they're really really hop forward. There's there's a lot of lot of hop in there to obviously mask yeah. the fact that there's there's no alcohol in it, whereas that's got that's got the hop character of a pale ale, but it it's not overly hopped. No, it it, it really keeps it keeps that flavour in. So as I said, it's 0 0.5, but it's got that full flavour like some of our competitors for a great tasting beer. And I remember when I came over trying a couple of low alcoholic beers and they were quite metallic and tinny and, and the like, whereas back home, a low alcoholic beer might have been around 2.5% or whatever. And it's quite easy to get the flavour that was in line with like a full strength beer. So it was a bit of a, oh my God, is, is that how it is? And watch with a number of, you know, great companies now and the category as a whole, just booming in spirits as well as beer. And you're getting products that have just got really full flavor. So for people who, you know, are giving up alcohol or reducing it, they're getting that great beer that they can join in with their friends. And then you've got, you know, people who just, you know, they like a break. And that's what most people are like. They like their full strength beers, but then every now and then I just want something that's non-alcoholic, but I've got a full flavour. And, you know, this is my favourite out of our range. That and the um, Pilsner are fantastic beers. So um, it's, um, it's great because the that low alcohol category in beer has really improved. Uh, over the last few years and you know a lot of the craft brewers are doing quite well um I know brew dog did uh, have done some decent work i really like mm. um, the adnams ghost ship the the alcohol free version of that yeah when i started with west berkshire nearly two two years ago we're at a craft beer festival at hyde park and i got to try the beers from big drop and that was a big eye-opener for for me um, because of the, the different styles they had and it was great and that made me look for others and then when our brewers were talking about it and then started brewing the pale ale it was just fantastic and that's I mean like for us as a brewery we have beers for all occasions and, and styles so we've got our cask range or real ale range which covers various flavour profiles and then We've got people, we've got pale ales, we've got pilsners, we've got lagers, and then we do our craft beer specials as well of higher ABVs. So we try and offer everyone something that they can enjoy. And, you know, with this, like I said, I get the, the pine smell on it and you get the 
with the hops as well, you get the tropical fruits. But what I enjoy sort of, well, I enjoy this with most foods and stuff like that. So it, for me also, it's great with, you know, the likes of, I'd say like a chicken satay and that, so, cause the part, you know, the hops from the pup and that with this pale ale just cut through that sort of chili and the creaminess of the peanut butter sauce. So I really, yeah, I'm biased, mate. I'm working with them and, and that, and when you've got a good range and, you know, it, it, it's great to be able to share it with people and say, look, you know, you've got to try this. And I think that's like anyone in our industry, when you're working with brands and you've got your mates who all love us because they're like, so what's new? What can I try? And that's like, we'll try this and have this. And, you know, um, yeah, I like sharing and sharing those with, with my mates. Well, you, you know, you, I know you say you're biased, but you've, you've really got to, you've got to buy into what you do. And, and I've been to plenty of beer festivals and trade events over the years. And, and, and you know the people who really believe in, in what they're selling. Um, yeah. So you, your passion for these products does come across, Danny. So, so. Oh, thanks, mate. Yeah, I haven't, been, you know, it, it's just that, you know, my mates and neighbours, especially, especially the neighbours during lockdown, you know, when there's been a chance, it's a case of, you know, they find out you work for a brewery and you're like, well, here's a couple of samples. And then you get told, oh, I've placed an order. You're like, brilliant. Thank yeah. you. And, that, and then they, you know, they say, I really enjoyed this one. It's like, well, wait till you try this. And then we can, ex you know, and, and that's, that's a great thing for me to recommend. But also, you know, through lockdown, I've been speaking with guys from different breweries. So like, you know, from Signature and Mondo and also Guaylo Beer and being able to have a few chats online um, and, you know, beer swaps and talk about the beers. And, you know, what it's been great for me because I get to see how our beers go against theirs. But it's also just great beers that you can sort of recommend and say to guys, you know what, I've, I've had this. And, um, yeah, my garage is full <laughs> of, of our stuff as well as a couple others. But, you know, it, it's all part of learning. It's what I keep saying through lockdown learning. So... Yeah, yeah, and you know, my, I'm the same. My fridge at the moment is is mainly beer. Um, you know, the, the the kids will have to wait for a food because the the fridge is full of beer. <laughs> yeah, that that definitely sounds familiar. <laughs> Where's all the food gone? Don't yeah. worry, it is cold though. Yeah, but it is learning, and I, you know, I I'm catching up with Sean Robertson um, regards yeah. to Milo beer um, soon, and. Uh, I caught up with a friend of mine today who works for um, Lion and Little Creatures and Hawking. Yeah. Um, and again, it, it is learning and, and we all share. That's the great thing. I've, I've, I've never known an industry like it where sales professionals who are competitors yeah. actually work together quite a bit. Yeah, I, I think it's just that when, at the end of the day, and depending so... You know, West Berkshire's an independent brewer, regional brewer. Um, we're proud of it and we're proud of the quality beers that we do. And, and you want people to know about us. And, you know, there, there's, you know, there are bigger boys. We've, most people have worked for them as well. And you just want people to know that, yep, you can have that. But there's also this as an alternative. And when you're sharing that, that sort of knowledge, I think people are quite open to it. And especially at the moment when most people have had to stay at home and it's either been local or independent or whatever, it's about saying, look, just enjoy it. Like, you know, really enjoy it. You've got this massive range, especially in beer when there's, you know, well over 2,000 brewers now. And, you know, the world's your oyster if you really want to try stuff, whether you're right into your, you know, that top 10, 15% like craft beer, beer geek part, or then you're learning to find out about other beers, or if you're into your sort of mainstream or, you know, ev everyday beers, you know, everyone's got a time and a place when they want to try something different. And it, it all works. And it's always great working with people to, 
just yeah try to just keep people in your category yeah yeah and i think there's there are more entrants to the beer category certainly i've noticed over the last uh, few years and you know when I, I when i was working I, I worked for brains brewery for for many years and we used to go to great british beer festival and you'd get a lot more yeah. a lot more of a younger audience to ale um there was a lot more of a female uh, contingent to drinking ale than than we'd had previously um and it's, it's great to see lots more entrance to the category yeah yeah it, it's just i think i saw a figure just as lockdown was opening up again uh, for April, that there was another 216 breweries that have been registered through 2020. So when everyone thought there'd be a load closing, that there's a load of people who've taken that the opportunity to go, you know what, I'm going to follow my passion and I'm going to do this or and that. And then we've seen people who've been able to do great things because of the resource and the inventiveness of, you know, their staff and yeah, it, 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 it's interesting times ahead for our industry, especially. So a, a wider industry as well and other ones as well. So um, I know I've been talking your ear off, so I thought I might, you might want to wait your whistle a bit more and yeah. maybe try, um, is it the good old boy? Yeah, excellent. Sweet. So that's it there, good old boy. So... This was the second beer that Helen and David brewed. It's probably our largest seller. It's also our um, most most awarded. So that's so, a that's a that's a proper traditional best bitter. It's a really great best bitter. You get get those sort of the floral floral notes. Um, for me, I, I do get, you know, there's in the malt build, there's a little bit of chocolate in that, and I get that sweetness when I smell it. Um, and yeah, you've got a really great amber colour mm. on it. So it's really lovely and clear. Obviously, you know, it, it, these days there's, there's a lot of different ways of doing beer, whether you have cloudy or downright murky, um, and they're all great, but you can't beat a nice clear. That's bitter. Um, yeah, it, it's just, it's a fantastic beer. It's it's great, especially with like a pie. So with a steak and ale pie, you know, there's a bloke in London, I think it's my pie. Um, I've had a few different pies from him with these. Uh, my local butcher stocks them. And there, the beer just goes down well. Um, good old boy goes great in gravy as well and that so if you need to top up over the pie it's just fantastic um, and yeah it's just one that at four percent is quite a as I mentioned we make sort of sessionable but well balanced beers and this goes down really well it's so it, it definitely um, well balanced I've had It's like you don't need to ask us twice to keep having another mouthful. No, no. I, I like when you said, do you want to try something else? My instant answer, of course, is yes. So, <laughs> so I, I suppose, I know, know you've asked us, but I was going to say, like, how have you found it through um, with your business and your customers now possibly reopening as well? How are they all finding it? So I think it's been tough. Um, it's certainly been tough on 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 those businesses that have had to close their doors, on businesses that have had to furlough staff, you know. But I think all the way throughout, there's been this overarching optimism, and I mm -hmm. think that's really what inspired me to set up the On Trade Network. It was, you know, I I, I spent a lot of time during my first furlough, uh, so I was furloughed for five months. That's, mm -hmm. So I was I was lucky enough to come back after that, but I spent a lot of time checking in on mates, uh, yeah. in the industry just over a beer on Zoom on this medium just uh, and it, it it was great to see people 
everyone going through the same stuff, but with a real yeah. positive spin. I didn't really get any negativity. Um, you know, of course, there are things that we would all like to have been seen to be done differently. Yeah. You know, decisions that governments have made. Of course, we've all got our views on that. But overall, people were focused on what the job in hand was and, and preparing for whenever uh, opening was going to be. Um, so I, I was pretty busy. Uh, when I came back to work in September uh, last year, it was pretty busy. And I, I, you know, I got to, to speak to a lot of customers and yeah. help them prepare and, uh, and put, put things in place to, to, to get everyone ready for reopening. Uh, so, so, yeah, it's been a long journey. It's been a tough one. But the, the overall uh, impression that I've had has been, you know, it's an industry like no other that rallies around like, like no other industry. Um, and it's one that I'm, I'm proud to be a part of. Yeah, I think you summed it up quite well where, you know, it's a job in, in hand. That's part and parcel of being a supplier as well as the industry. So, you know, you just have to get, get on with it. Okay, as you said, decisions have been made. We've got to make, get on with it. Let's prove them wrong and crack on. And we, we keep, I keep saying it, but some of the things I've seen via social media, it's just been fantastic. You know, people doing, you know, cocktail boxes or, you know, Zoom tastings, doing, you know, wine and cheese mixings and stuff like that. It, it's fantastic to see because people have probably thought outside the comfort zone and gone, what can we offer? And then operators as well, just going, right, we're going to use this time to be proactive and get ready and we're going to do this. And we're, we're allowed. And I think similar to you, I think it's just checking in with people and saying you're okay. And I think Joby mentioned it as well, is that, yeah, unfortunately, we've probably lost people outside the industry. But the people that have been, my opinion is that we've got people that have had to step up and excelled, but also there'll be people that are in, have used for whether they've been made redundant or whatever, have all focused on learning so they'll be even better equipped with their experience everything else to step forward and have so much to offer and I think employers need hopefully will be looking at that but also the people that have been on furlough or whatever employers will look and go well we need to train you up to get you back into yeah. things and then also what's even you know mental health weeks not far away it's just making sure everyone's you know their physical and mental health is doing okay because you know nobody prepares you for what what the last year's been no. and certainly it is and it's still a little bit uncertain but I think on the whole everyone's gearing up for like just trying to smash it out of the park yeah absolutely and I'm, I'm, I'm glad you you touched on on mental health it's something that um needs needs to be talked about because the you know our, our industry has, has suffered some, some real tough times and a lot of people like ourselves, you know, who are social creatures who go out and, you know, a big part of my job is talking to people who people like us have had no one to talk to. Um, and it's tough. So I think we've got to just make sure we look out for everyone. Um, yeah. Let's, let's, you know, let's, let's look out for all of our colleagues in the industry. So, uh, yeah, good. Sweet. Shall I, We've got one more to do, so yeah. Yep. So last one will be the detour parlor. Excellent. And thank you for sending me the samples and uh, and the nice the nice glassware as well to to drink it out of. No worries, uh, mate. It, it's been a pleasure. So uh, it's just great to talk about the industry and yeah, share a couple of beers with someone. Yeah. And um. Yeah, cheers, mate. Cheers. So this one's the Detour Parlour. So like I said to you, we were looking at beers we didn't have in our portfolio. This one has been exceptionally well received from testing out in the on-trade before it was Detour. It's just a 
really nice sort of, you know, you can see that sort of, I think it's like a light copper appearance. Great head on it. Very, very citrus. Yeah. So you've got, you've got Summit, you've got Columbus, um, Chinook, and Citra, I think Citra um, hops in there. And it just brings all that sort of tropical fruits coming through both on taste and on the smell as well. So. And then is that a, a pale, pale ale malt? Is there any other malt in there? Um, I think we've used uh, Euro pills. Um, so that, that's a big part of it. So this, it's like most pale ales. If you've got something that's a bit spicy, so, you know, I tend to have this when I'm doing um, like chicken tacos with either a bit of harissa paste or chipotle paste with it. It just cuts through that heat. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's one of my favourites in great. our portfolio, mate. So, well, I do like it. What about um, so where are you, where are you where are you stocked? Obviously, in, in uh, the off trade, and they've got a web shop, and there's there's various other places selling. Yeah, so it's more on Good Old Boy. We're um, in mainly in Waitrose at the moment, but we are talking with um, the other supermarkets. Um, we're on Ocado with the ales. I think with the, the package beers, it's a lot more of the independence is where we've been focused on. So we're looking, that be changed. We've got, you know, we've been, Renegade and Detour have been on Flavorly um, and the reviews we've been having across the board are really great, to be honest. Um, I think we sort of fly under the radar a little bit, but when we share what we do, People are probably pleasantly surprised, and that, and then we f were able to work with people and go from there. Um, I think going forward, um, you know, post lockdown, for me, um, I'm hoping just to get out into trade and just see it more and seeing where I can help people and. and you know, get our brand stock, but more importantly, it's just, yeah, it's, it's, there's, there'll be places that are shut, but, you know, there's sometimes a churn, but there's also these people, people move into other premises. And I'm really looking forward to just, yeah, being more out in trade and when more people, places are open. Um, and, and for us as a business, I think it's, I think we're probably, we're, we're quite optimistic. I think that I think any supplier of brewer would probably be a little bit tentative as well because when you brew, you're brewing four to six weeks out. And we know that everything's a bit weather dependent, especially here in the UK. Yeah. Um, but, you know, if it's good weather, we'll, it'll sell. And, you know, people will go outdoors. And that's what we really, really want to see is just people out enjoying themselves and enjoying our beers as much as possible. So, um, yeah, it's just, um, yeah, yeah. It, I think there's a bit of, op, there's a fair bit of optimism and excitement. I think just a little bit of cautiousness um, and hopefully it'll, um, yeah, but we'll get in the next year or two, it'll start to get back to not, a, as you said, not a normal, but a new normal where everything's a bit more relaxed and you're not sort of looking over your shoulder waiting for a, a lockdown to come yeah well you know i'm sure people will get out and enjoy these beers i've i've enjoyed them tonight so uh oh, yeah no very good um i really appreciate your time your thoughts on the industry and for being kind enough to send me some some stuff to try while we talk and uh i look forward to having a, a pint of this with you out in trade as soon as we can so uh Definitely, mate. If you're up in London for Brew London, we'll be definitely there as well. I, I will be there. I think I'm going on the Thursday. So there are, yeah, I probably I'll... shouldn't have said that on video. Anyone? <laughs> yeah, I'll be there on the Thursday. <laughs> no worries. The more the merrier. Or come, come to the West Berkshire stand. We'll be more than happy to help you. Definitely. Nice one. Well, thank you, Danny. Cheers. No worries, mate. Great speaking to you.